Welcome to Queen Deluxe. Let's do some vintage sewing. <laughs> This week on Queen Deluxe, I make an ugly Christmas dress. I have an old dress that I used to wear in the holidays and it's kind of worn out and so I wanted to make a new one. Super inspired by this crazy fabric that I found at Joann's and I picked up, went through my stash, got a little, some trims and things that would go with it. Um, and then I was looking through my patterns and I found this 1957, uh, a dress that I thought would be really fun to make and would look attractive on me. So I decided I'm gonna go with that one. Uh, so come with me and we'll make an ugly Christmas dress. Not really ugly, charming Christmas dress. All right, my plan for the Christmas dress is use the Simplicity pattern 1987, super cute, with this adorable hip detail and the back with the bows. I'm gonna lengthen the sleeve and add a collar out of this silver dot over here. Um, and uh, it has this cute little detail in the back, this pleat. So there is a skirt pleat underlay that I'm gonna use um, and put in there and it's gonna be the black candy canes. Should look super adorable and there it is close up skirt pleat underlay, so that'll be black in that little tiny under the pleat. You'll, it'll just peek out when twirling or whatever. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna make a collar for this dress, and it doesn't come with one, so I thought I would walk you through the process. I have some paper laid down under my pattern. This is the front bodice, um, and this is the edge of um, the neckline. I'm gonna line that up with the edge of the paper and pin it down. And I got my spiky. So I'm gonna do the seam, like on the seam line here. That was center front, and this is the shoulder line. I have the shoulder seams marked. This is the neckline right here, and this is the center front. And then I have the same for the back, center back, neckline, shoulder seam, edge of the collar. Um, I don't know where I want the front and back to sort of line up, so I'm gonna pin the pattern onto the dress form, cut these out, do some pinning and folding, and I will be right back. I have it pinned on the dress form, and I think I want it to be wider here. I don't want it to be coming right to the center front. I do want it to kind of come out like this, and then just wider, maybe almost to the bust point. Like that, and about an inch, inch and a half wider, and then back up to the thing. And then maybe same sort of thing in the back so that I can put like a bow. detail. I think I will widen this a little bit, but not as much as the front. Okay, cool. Back to paper. I have pinned the paper pattern back on, traced all of the lines and my new lines with my spiky. Which you cannot see it on here at all. There we go. This, this is the old one. This is the shoulder line. I need to add seam allowance here and here. And then I'm coming out about that inch and a half from here for the new new collar line. And let's see where this lines up. I think pretty straight. So I think I'm just gonna make a perpendicular line here because these necklines are on the straight of grain. So if I put that on the cross, that'll really hold it out. So there's that. So, new center front, 
like I said, the front is really here. Neckline, shoulder seam, collar shape. Straight up green line. I'll do the same to the back and we're gonna start cutting out. I'm starting to cut out. I have laid out uh, the front skirt piece and it is on the fold over here. Um, and then I have this, like, I don't know, it's like five inches left on the width of my fabric. And I want the skirt to be ridiculously full. So I'm just gonna go ahead and include this extra five inches in to the pattern piece. So I've drawn a little pencil line up here to extend it and one at the bottom. And then the other thing to note is this fabric is directional. All the Santa faces are facing one direction. They do not, there's not any that are upside down. Where some of the, you know, gingerbread guys are upside down. They go both directions, but the Santas and these little snowmen and the ice skates are all one direction. So I have to make sure that I cut this going with everything, all those faces going up so it doesn't look weird. Okay back and side front and so I have done this is the inside of the pleat center back and there is a dart sort of I think this is hitting side seam and I have uh, went ahead and just added that extra to the skirt I just cut it the full width of the fabric so I will have a very full skirt here I'm going to cut the skirt pleat underlay and some bows and I cut some bias ready for piping. I'm sewing the back center back together just basting it so I can put the pleat underlay section in. I've pinned it and now I'm going to sew it at 5 8 Press those to the side and now I'm stay stitching the pleat in place. I have previously overlocked all the pieces. I forgot to tell you that earlier. Now it's time for pockets. This dress has pockets! Yay! So I'm stitching, it's sort of like side front. The pockets are in and it's um, five eighths on that edge and now sewing around the two pockets together and sewing that side front um, seams together. I will do this on both sides. Now that the skirt is assembled, I do gathering stitches forever. I will save you from watching the whole process. And we start stitching the bodice together and it's dart time. I've got the bodice here on the table. I'm marking the darts. I, the, the pattern is so many colors, I can't really use a wax, nothing was showing up. So I'm just gonna use some pencil. So I put pins in through the marks, and then I'll go to both sides. And then I'm lifting up the pattern and doing this side. And then I'll do the back right now and show you. So with all the darts. There are two on each front, a side and a like princess seam. And then there's two on the back, so a total of six. So sewing a dart, you're, I'm pinned my lines together and this is the apex. So I'm gonna head from the widest part of the dart to the apex. And I usually backstitch because of, I've grown up in theater and everything needs to be, um, a little bit more heavy duty. You can certainly tie knots at the end and that's supposed to be a little bit um, kinder to the apex, but I don't find that it really has much of a difference and I don't mind a little pointy apex on a 1950s dress. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. do six more. So the pattern instructions want us to slice up the darts and then press them open. So I thought, hey, why not? Let's check that. And they've also sliced um, here. So 
so we don't get any pulling at the waist. So I'm gonna do that too. I'll be right back. Now that the darts are sewn up, I'm going to sew the side seams and sleeves together at the shoulder seam and under the arm. Since this is a dolman style dress that were very popular in the 1950s, it's all in one, which is kind of cool. Hey guys. All right, so here it is on. I feel like it's looking really cute. It's nicely over here. I do need to clip the seam, but I don't want to do that until I turn it around. Um, I think, what do I think? I think the sleeve might need to come in just a skosh at the, at the forearm here. The other side, because my wrist is right there. So I think it needs to come up a little bit. And then I've made a collar, cut the collar out, so I will. I think I can just move ahead. Looking super, super duper cute. I've decided to add piping to the bottom edge of the bodice to define that edge. Um, so I've cut two inch wide pieces out of my candy cane fabric and now I'm sewing them together in kind of the zigzag fashion so that you're on a straight of grain. Add a quarter of an inch. Now I'm gonna add some cord. I have some cotton yarn that was in my stash. You won't see the hot pink because of the black candy cane fabric that's going over it. You lay it down the center and sew close to the edge as you can with, um, you can use a zipper foot. I just use my regular foot since it's not that far away. It's like a 16th of an inch. And this is what it looks like. It's not hard and it really customizes your clothing. Right, so I'm gonna put my foot right against the cord. It's not the stitch line because I just did, um, when I made the piping, I wanted the stitch far away from the cord so that I can get it nice and tight when I stitch it over here this time and my stitch, my stitches won't show. Coming up to my pivot, which is right here. I'm gonna leave my pin in. Kind of sneak up on it like this. I'm gonna actually do a little slicing right here. My camera's right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump it. There we go. Okay, to get a nice sharp corner, you're gonna turn it like that. Do one stitch and then turn the rest of the way. And I'm headed up here. And you just can't pin that turn. Um, you have to do it as you go. That's just Super nice corner. Check it out. It's right. Okay, so that is gonna be like super friggin' adorable. Then the skirt will come out from here. Yay! I'm gonna keep messing with these corners and keep going. Set up the collar and cuff pieces, added some rickrack and tacked those on. Time to add the skirt to the bodice. You simply top stitch the skirt pieces on and stitch in the ditch. Turned out so cute. I did end up putting piping at the cuff and the collar. 
to define that edge and added some red buttons I had in my stash down the front to make it look a little bit more gingerbread-y. Video's getting real long, so I just took a picture of the side zipper I put in, and someday I'll do a tutorial on that. for sewing with me this week. If you have any questions or want to see that zipper tutorial, let me know in the comments below. Happy holidays! <laughs> Rubaka, what is it? What is it?